<gasps> the toy shop! This was around two years ago, when I was working at Mr. Cladivo's workshop. After his daughter Anna's death, he wouldn't leave his room. I kept the shop clean, tried my best to communicate with him. I could hear him talking to himself, though. The death of his daughter has upset me as well. The only thing I wanted was to share his pain and try to console him, but... He didn't let me. He didn't even answer me, not even once. When I knocked, he went silent. It was as if he wanted me to leave so he could keep talking to himself. After a few days, I assumed he went insane. One night, I knocked on his door several times, waiting for him to answer. If he didn't, I had also considered breaking the door. Then, he opened the door. He showed his face through the crack. I could see his sunken face. What is it, Miss Rubilova? Mr. Clodivo, I think you know what's wrong. Are you aware that you haven't left that room for a week? A week? He furrowed his brows, sighing. I, I didn't notice. Thank you. He left the room, pulling the door shut behind him. I don't want to meddle in your affairs, but who are you talking to? Miss Rublova, well, it wouldn't be wise of me to share this with you, but... Why wouldn't it? Right. You've been working as my maid for years. Yes, I have. Can I trust that you won't say a word of this to any strangers? Surely. Well, I thought I was going insane at first. Anastasia, she... she spoke to me. Mr. Cludivo. We're both mourning her death. However, it is not healthy for you to lock yourself in like that. You're implying that I have gone crazy, Miss Rublova. I really saw her. Maybe we should take a stroll outside. Or, if you keep yourself busy with your work, you'll feel a lot better. She must have become a ghost. Or else, how could she have been able to talk to me? We went to her funeral days ago. She was buried properly. She can't return as a ghost. Mr. Cludivo, are you alright? Mr. Cludivo? You may be right, Rubilova. Not leaving your room may have caused you to see things. You should go out and get some fresh air. That might work. It's a relief to see you out of your room, Mr. Cludivo. Do you want to come along? Knowing you, I think you'd start working again on your dolls and toys when you come back. Indeed so. It's better if I clean your tools. I'll prepare them for your arrival. Thank you. For everything. Don't even mention it. Please. It's my job. I handed him his coat. I waited for him to leave. He looked like he was in a rush. It didn't take long for him to get out of my sight. After that, I entered his room. My plan was to see what was inside. But he had been too care- But he had been too careless. He didn't lock the door behind him. I opened the door and... I saw his daughter's body. She was placed on a chair, looking cold and lifeless. He had dressed her with her favorite clothes, her hair tied in a meticulous way. I couldn't handle the sight of this and closed the door. Horrible. Then I thought that I had to bury the poor child first to bring an end to her... But then I thought that I had to bury the poor child first to bring an end to her suffering. I tried to stop the shaking of my hands. Then, when I tried to open the door, the door wouldn't budge. I waited for Mr. Cladivo to return, but... He didn't return as himself. He returned as a Vodnik. Indeed so. Hmm. Did he murder his own daughter? I hear Mr. Tolupnik let out an irritated grunt. There are rumors going on about that, but I doubt it. The only thing I'm sure of is that he kept his daughter's body in his room. He sounded like a good man from the way you describe him. Are you sure that it was a real body? Absolutely. I still can't get over the sight of it. I assume the body should have been at least a week old when you saw it. Yes. It should have started rotting at that point, Miss Rubilova. Are you sure you didn't notice a bad smell? I wasn't in a situation that lended itself to thinking properly. I didn't notice any bad smell, Miss Silver. You said it was a toy maker, right? Yes. Are you sure the body you saw wasn't a doll? She nods. I've seen some very lifelike dolls before. You said that you were afraid too. Maybe you mistook it. I'm sure of it, Vilan. 
That body was a spitting image of his late Anastasia. Hmm. Is this thing related to, to what the Vodnik wished from the wish granter? Silver. Yes, Mr. Shalipnik. I'll be calling the cops again. Ah, right. Also, Mr. Shalipnik, I hand him the keys. Won't you return? I, I don't think I will. I don't think you should go, at least not until the police arrive. I should have expected that. Okay, I'll be around. That was a lie. Well then, Miss Silver, I will check the water tank to see if the wa valves are alright. I hope that everything goes well for you. Thank you, Miss Rublova. I hope we don't get in trouble for that. It is best if we leave as fast as we can. Silver. Yes, Vilem. I thought that you were the one who... killed Zivan? He extends his hand to me for a handshake. I apologize. I should have considered the Vodnik as a possibility. He still doesn't seem like he trusts me, but I shake his hand. Do you want me to bring back something from the Vodnik's place? Are you gonna run? I shrug. So, do you want anything? Like what? I don't know. For a cook? For revenge? He laughs. I remind myself once more that I shouldn't make assumptions about the human psyche. You don't plan to bring back his head like a war trophy, right? <laughs> you do. I thought of it, but don't, Silver. Okay. Well then, Silver, I will help Mr. Chalupnik take Zivan's body out of the tub. What are you planning to do? Maybe we should place him on the bed. He never liked water. I nod as Vilem exits the scene. I'm surprised how easily he was able to get a grip on himself. He looks a lot better than we when we first discovered Skoda's body. Although, where's Cooper? He's late. I should check on him. I go upstairs and... Do I hear Cooper yelling? What is that sound? I push the door open, but... It leads me to an absurd scene. You can't switch chapters like that! Cooper and Yuri? Yuri is sitting on the bed while Pavle is lying on the ground, unconscious. What have you two done? I don't know, Miss Silver. Miss Pavla has been like this since I arrived and I can't wake her up. What did you do, Yuri? I didn't do a thing. I guess she couldn't handle my royal aura. Yuri, did you hurt her? It's hard to stand in front of me, you know. Weak people can't manage it, Silver. Answer me. What happened? I don't know. She just fainted. Cooper, Chalupnik will kill us if he sees Pavla like this. Right, we should wake her up. No, we should run. Let's run! Carry me, Silver! I take Yuri on my back. Miss Silver, I can't leave a child like this. Cooper, this is not the time to think about your principles. I don't want to get into any trouble. I see Paula opening her eyes. Phew. Oh, orange man? She talks in a very low voice. I don't know if she can do that. Yes, Miss Paula. I, I, I hate Yuri! Cooper looks at us. I see Yuri sticking out his tongue. What did this boy do to her? Don't worry, Miss Pavla. I will talk to Yuri. Yuri is so stupid. What did you say about me, you spoiled brat? You're a spoiled brat yourself, Yuri. Little Yuri, would you please? Excuse me, little Yuri? A whole kingdom used to call me a king. A peasant like you doesn't have the right to. We have to leave here now. Is Yuri here? No, I'm not, stupid. What did you say about the princess, young king? Oh no, oh no, oh no. It can't be. I believe that the so-called princess of this country is a bit of a dunderhead, Lord Shudlupnik. I do not know what that word means, but... Step aside, Silver. I step aside. And I start running down the stairs with Yuri on my back. Miss Silver, where are you going? Pavla, what happened? Yuri starts laughing on my back. Silver, you're a savage. I got an achievement called Absolute Mad Lad. Why? You left him, Silver. Are you aware of what you're doing? I have a job to do. I cannot risk my life recklessly. He giggles. You're so mean. I believe you're the one who's mean, Yuri. What did you do to Pavla? She tried to take my gloves. She got what she deserved. Did you hit her? 
No! I just yelled that she couldn't touch me, and she fainted. That sounds like a big lie to me. You'll understand when you get older, Silver. Is that so? If you can get to be as epic as me, sure. Huh. Where are we going? Do you know the way to the Vodniks? Depends on what you're aiming to do. There's a police car in front of the hotel. I run to hide behind the Hotel Pavla so that we can get be in their blind spot. Are you a criminal, Silver? No, I've been an undercover detective. You aren't kidding me, are you? Not at all. I show him the badge in my pocket. I have to be honest with you if you're going to tell me all you know about the Vodnik. I'm a detective from the Supernatural Cases Department. I'm supposed to collect and archive information about the mythical creatures that I see. I take out my list. This is the list of creatures that I have to take care of. What kind of creatures do you have in there? Demons? Monsters? Vampires? Werewolves? Jinns? Ghosts? Do you have a gun to take care of them? I surely do. I pull out and spin my Enfield number two. You see, I have this revolver to use against vampires, werewolves, and other things. The revolver is a regular one, but I have silver bullets that can kill supernatural creatures. It's useless when you face spirits, though. For them, I have bullets that are actually capsules filled with salt and holy water. Didn't really have the chance to try this one out yet, but I can't wait to. I hope it works. He seems like he's feeling uneasy. I thought this kind of stuff appeals to little kids because guns look cool. I slide it back to my pockets, but I still get no answer from Yuri. Yuri? It looks dangerous. It is, so I'll put it away from now. I'd be startled if you were to fire it by mistake. I don't do those kinds of simple mistakes. At least, not anymore. The first time I got a revolver in my hands was definitely not the, shall I say, brightest experience I've had. Anyway, who's that man that you're dragging around? Cooper, you mean? The orange one. That's Cooper, yeah. He's also a detective. A co-worker. Really? He looks like your apprentice. So, I'm not the only one to think that. Silver and copper, then. He smiles like he just solved a puzzle. That's so cool. Is it? Very. I check the police cars again. It looks like we have to wait for Cooper here. If Cooper's not coming, can I sit in the front? No. You can be sure that I'm old enough, Silver. Don't try to persuade me. I can bicker you all day. I can bicker with you longer than that. I can leave you wherever I want, kid. But if you tell me what you know and act like a good child, maybe I'll let you. I'm already a good child. Really? Tell me what you know. Um, I don't want to. You promised. Were you running away from the Vodnik itself? No. Was it somehow related to him? Yes. Why was that thing chasing you? Do you make something a- Did you make someone angry? I don't make people mad. They happen to be hot-headed. Why, why was he running away from something related to the Vodnik? I wonder. I begin to inspect him from head to toe. Alright, let's start with his hat. Let's start from the top, right? It's fluffy. <laughs> Look at his eyes. I've never seen eyes that colorful before. I guess some people are blessed with good genes. Look at his poncho. I wonder if he stole something from the Vodnik's toy shop and is hiding it underneath his poncho. Still, my best option would be to believe that he... Wait. My best option would be to believe that he has stolen something. You're boring, Silver. I'm not gonna disagree with you on that. Won't you fight with me? He sounds like he enjoys conflict. I was thinking, maybe we should play a game until Cooper comes. Where the hell is Cooper, anyway? Wasn't he right behind us? Was he- Wait, did he not run away with us? Did he stay to help Chalupnik and the kid? I should be able to trick him into telling me the reason why the thing related to the Vodnik was chasing him. What kind of a game? Okay, so, I will ask random questions that can be answered with a yes or a no. Huh? But, if you say anything other than a yes or a no as your first answer, you're out. That sounds too easy. It's not as easy as it sounds, but it'll help us get to know each other. 
Besides, you can ask me whatever you want. I was bored. Let's play it then, Silver. Shall I ask you something first? No! Let's do it like this. I ask one question, you ask one question. If you insist, okay then. I'm a little concerned about the 10 in the top right corner. Is this a game that I can fail? I start. Do you like, uh, dogs? Yes. I once met a dog in the backyard of the orphanage that I grew up in. He was such a good boy. Probably the best friend I've had until now. Wait, is she referring to Cooper as her best friend? Because that's kind of sweet. I hope she is. This was a basic start, but I had to hold myself back in order to not say anything more. Of course, this kid is playing dirty. Why is he playing dirty? He did the thing. He asked the answer no question. It was a bad question. Me too. I once gave an order to my servants to bring all the dogs in town to the garden of my castle. It was one of the best days of my life. But they pooped a lot. That sounds heavenly. It's my turn now. Alright, yeah, we need to start off with something simple. Oh, it's a timer! It's a timer! Have you ever broken a bone? He's struggling. Yeah. Yes. He looks kind of unsure about this. Hmm? Which bone? Right leg, I think? I also forget things a lot. Don't worry. Anyway, it's my turn. Have you ever beaten a man up? The huge gap between the first and the second question was undeniable. Excuse me for being honest. Yes. Uh, have you ever been to sea? I have! It was so much fun! Because it wasn't as deep as I thought, but you know, if you stand near the beach, it's not deep at all, and you lose the game. I told you to answer me only with yes or no. Wait! That's not good, is it? Because that means we don't get to ask any more questions? He gasps. He's terrible at this game. I thought I could get some information out of this. Oh, did I ask the wrong question? Continue! I won't lose, okay? Have you been to the moon? What is this question? Even though he's spoiled, grumpy, and hard to get along with, I guess he's just a kid still. No. Can you whistle? No. I think I embarrassed him a bit. Children who can whistle are the cool kids after all. Highly, highly, highly disagree. That has nothing to do with the fact that I can't whistle. I hate whistling. Do you have a gramophone in your home? Yes! Somehow his eyes brightened up when I answered this question. Have you ever used a weapon? I don't want to go too deep on these questions yet, because I'm worried that he's gonna fail again. Yes. Really? What did you use? A slingshot. Should I guess so. Cool. Of course, it's my turn now. Yes or no? Hilarious piece of humor right there, Yuri. No. He giggles. <laughs> Have you ever eaten a bug? Yes. I humiliated him! Oh no! I am terrible at this. I see. My turn. Have you ever taken a train? Yes. Many times. Yuri looks highly disturbed. Yuri? I'm done with this game, because it's not entertaining or useful in any way. You're making me angry, and I bet you're doing this so that you can get something out of my mouth. Apparently I am bad at this. Apparently I, I am really bad at this. I was just trying to socialize with you, but I might have wanted to learn certain things as well. Such as? I thought that you stole something from the Von Nix toy shop. Don't you try to accuse me for being a filthy thief? How dare you! Alright, I have no choice left. Did I completely mess that up? Yuri stands still, not saying a word. I believe he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. He doesn't yell like he did before either. I'm so concerned that I completely messed that up. Could we have gotten any information? I'm gonna have to reload and try that again. <laughs> Later, because I'm super curious now. I see Cooper coming out of Hotel Pavla. Cooper! Miss Silver, why are you hiding there? It's nothing. Or, more importantly, why did you leave me up there? 
I thought Mr. Chili Pig would be furious, so I ran. That makes sense. So, how did everything go? Not that bad. We waited until Miss Pavla told us everything. Also, I gave my testimony as a witness. You didn't tell anyone anything about the Vodnik. I didn't. Good. But, young Master Yuri, you should apologize. Lord Von Geldern, you mean? Can we continue talking while we're in the car? Sure thing, Miss Silver. I start carrying Yuri again. He isn't saying a word. Young Master Yuri, are you alright? None of your business, Cooper. Copper. Copper? I'm afraid my name is. I know! Cooper doesn't answer. I open the door and place Yuri on the back seat. I see Cooper is in the driver's seat, so I sit next to him. Yuri, will you show us the way to the Vodnik? I only said I knew the way. I didn't say that I will take you there. He's pouting. I sigh. Whatever the thing is you've stolen, I will pay for it. Are you lying again, Silver? Looks like I've made him have even more trust issues. I'm not lying, but I can't say that I'm rich. So maybe we have to exchange the toy you stole with something cheaper. If it's a toy, of course. I like this toy in particular. I hope you didn't steal anything too expensive. Thank you, Silver. Will you forgive me, Yuri? Copper! Yes? Show me the map! Yuri puts his finger on a green spot by the lake. Here. Are you sure, young Master Yuri? Lord Von Geldern. And yes, I'm 100% sure. I did take some cartography classes. Cooper starts the car. Now then, should we start talking about Miss Pavla and the apology you should make? I haven't done anything wrong. You can't make me apologize. Miss Pavla said that you scared her. She tried to attack me. What would you expect me to do? Attack you? What did she tell you? Because right now, it seems like she was telling the story extremely one-sided. She told me that she asked you to give her gloves back. Then? Then you said no. Because they're my gloves. Of course I will try to defend myself. Are you sure those are yours, Yuri? I prefer Lord Von Geldern, copper. Just like I prefer Mr. Cooper, young Master Yuri. And before you accuse me of being a filthy thief once more, they're mine. Yuri, be honest. They were Pavla's. I expropriated them. We should return them, then. I told Mr. Chalupnik that I would buy a new pair. Anyway, Cooper, what did Pavla tell you? She told me that you shoved her- that you showed her your hands and they scared her. How is that my problem? Yuri's hands? Are his hands burnt? That explains his stubbornness about not wanting to give the gloves back. Apparently, you also told her several times that she is stupid. Um... Also, Miss Silver. Yes? This morning, Papa stated that her gloves were taken by a ghost, didn't she? Yuri's eyes grew bigger. What a stupid kid! Everyone knows that ghosts don't exist. Ghosts do exist. But maybe she just saw Yuri with his poncho, and while trying to wake up, she thought of him as a ghost. How did you enter Hotel Pava, young Yuri? None of your business. He leans back. I already showed you the way. I have no intention of speaking anymore. Right. I'll ask again after I buy him the toy that he wants. Maybe he'll grow cro closer to me by that time. Miss Silver, while I was gone, what did you discuss in the meeting with the hotel staff? The one who killed Skoda is the Vodnik. Vodnik? Silver, maybe you're mistaken. He can't kill anyone. He's a softy. Then what were you running away from? Don't ask me anything, Silver. I refuse to talk. Then don't assume that I am mistaken. So, it wasn't Miss Blanca. Yes. Just like we thought. I'm glad everything went well, Miss Silver. Also, if you're interested in the well-being of the hotel folk, I have to say that Vilem was doing a lot better than I thought. Chalupnik seemed like he didn't entirely believe me. I think Miss Rubalova will persuade him soon enough. I see. It's nice to hear that they're doing alright. Who are those Vilem and Rubalova people that you're speaking of? The cook and the maid of the hotel. Servants, then. Miss Silver, this is the place that Yuri pointed to on the map. I look around. 
After we pass those th trees, we'll see his toy shop. I get out of the car. Yuri tries his best to jump out of the car and come near me. Yuri, don't strain yourself. It's fine. I should be able to do this much now. He holds my hand. Congrats. As a celebration of his accomplishment, he puts on a happy face. I'm relieved to see him walk. This way, he doesn't, this way he doesn't have to depend on me in case something happens. Still, he is a kid. I have to keep an eye on him. Can you walk while holding my hand like this? I think I can. Oh, would you look at that? Young Mr. Yuri is walking. Are you amazed? Surprised? I'm worried, actually. Are you sure you'll be fine? Save your worryment for another time, commoner. Cooper. Yes, Miss Silver. I noticed that we forgot our stuff at Hotel Pavla. Would you drive to the hotel and retrieve them? How did you forget your stuff? Your detectives. Did they forget their video equipment? How do you forget your video equipment? When you're literally shooting a documentary. These people. They're already in the trunk, Miss Silver. See, Cooper, MVP. Since when? Then, can you guard this place while Yuri and I are inside? Why do you want to go inside alone with Yuri? This is dangerous, Silver. You will be our backup. I'll shoot the flare if things go wrong. Stay alert. Is there a problem? I'll do my best. We start walking through the trees with Yuri. Miss Silver, take care. You too, young lad. Being called young lad when you're a king is extremely annoying, you know. I think he's doing it because you're calling him copper. He must understand that he is inferior to me. You can call me Yuri, even though it's a bit too informal. I'll make an exception for you. Feeling special yet, Silver? You don't have to call me Your Majesty. He grasps my hand more firmly than before. I can't believe that he trusts me. Even I can't trust me. With the lake nearby, this place seems more like a peaceful dwelling than a toy shop. I wonder if there's really something supernatural in there. I shouldn't doubt myself. Um... Why are there shovels in what seems like a fresh grave right outside the house? Um... I'm a little concerned. I, I don't feel entirely safe in this place, and I think we should have brought Cooper. There's definitely something weird inside. Yuri stops. Silver, what is it? We're here. I can see that. There's a faint melody of a violin emanating from inside the house. Now we can go back. He returns towards Cooper's car. I don't let go of his hand. I told you, I would pay for whatever you took. Why do you want to go back? Is there something you forgot to tell me? I don't want to enter. Tell me why. The girl, Vodnik's daughter? He pauses. She's not normal. It's best if we leave them alone. Miss Rubalova told me that the Vodnik's daughter was deceased. Is he talking about her ghost? Did you see his daughter? She died around a year ago, Yuri. There's no way you were able to see her. You, you said in the car that ghosts existed, didn't you? I did? But you know that it's not easy to see them. Why don't you just believe me, Silver? Don't interrupt me, Yuri. Besides, I... I don't want you to see her! Why is he worried for me? What is up with this ghost? Look, I will be cautious if I see her, alright? I've dealt with ghosts before, I'm used to them. He stares down. Looks like he really doesn't want us to go in. Um... Um, so here's what I'm thinking. Oh god, I don't know what I'm thinking. Yuri knows something that he's not telling us, but this could straight up be dangerous. And I'm not sure if I want to take that chance to kill a little, or get Yuri hurt. He's a little kid. Oh, crap. Plus, if we tell him to go back alone, then he'll be all alone in the forest, and that might not be a good thing either. Shoot! 
Um, my gut instinct tells me that we will be guarding him at all times. I will be guarding you at all costs, Yuri. I don't need you guarding me. He huffs. You seem scared, though. I am the king of Hanover, Silver. I don't get scared. I felt a fear in your voice, therefore I decided to help you. I'm failing to understand how you would help me, but I will gladly take the offer. My offer is... You need to quit your job, Silver. I can't do that. You can. You just choose not to. Point. You can quit your job and live like in a farm raising your own chicken. Chicken. Singular. That chicken will rule the entire farm. Tempting. If I quit my job, no one will clean the bad guys out of this world. Bad guys? Do you think that the Vodnik is a bad guy? You don't? Yes. You shouldn't judge people just by the way that they acted towards you. But the Vodnik is a good man. <gasps> is it the daughter who is the evil one here? Ooh. Don't you think you're being a little too trusting? I... We live in bad times. You shouldn't trust anyone that quickly. I don't. You should always act while keeping solid facts and logic in mind. Why did you take my offer while we were in the backyard? You did it because you trusted me, right? You're so naive, Yuri. I could have harmed you. Anyone in the hotel could have harmed you, in fact. The Vodnik killed a man today. He's a harmful beast. Therefore, he needs to be eliminated. As Yuri stays silent, I take the silver bullets out of my gun. What are you doing? I'm reloading my gun with the holy water bullets. What? The ones I talked about at the hotel, Ali. They are for ghosts, remember? Are you gonna shoot the girl too? No. Oh. If the girl causes trouble, I will need to get rid of her too. I don't want to do that though. She isn't on my list, so it's not my priority. I don't think either the girl or the Vodnik are bad people, Silver. We just had an argument. With a girl. I won, of course. You don't look like you did. I closed the cylinder after filling the gun and pointed to the grass. It feels nice to have it in my hands. Silver. Hmm? One of the bullets was a bit ugly. What do you mean? The first one you inserted. I closed the cylinder without any problem. Can I take a look? I sigh and open the sil- What? What's wrong? I can't open it. Just like I thought, it's stuck. I take my dagger out and fiddle with the cylinder. We're wasting time. Maybe you shouldn't use your gun. I can use my dagger. I meant, maybe you don't have to kill the Vodnik. Yuri, I don't want to hear a word from you about this ever again. The cylinder pops out, alongside with the bullets. Yuri points at one of them. This is the ugly one. You have a good eye. Of course. I throw the bullet with dents into the river nearby. You're being reckless, Silver. What were you gonna do if the water in the bullet spilled over? Holy water can't hurt you, Yuri. Huh. I pick up all the bullets, refill the empty slot, and tuck the cylinder back into its place. Silver, careful! I hear the door of the Vodnik's toy shop opening. Get behind me, Yuri. Yuri, for the first time, listens to me without objecting. I slide my gun back into its holster. A girl around Yuri's height gets out of the door. Rubilova must have lied about the girl. She doesn't look like a ghost at all. Who are you? I'm Laura Silver. You must be Anastasia. Yes. What do you want? She looks exactly like the girl in uh, the Pokemon with uh, the Pokemon anime with uh, Abra. I don't remember her name, but I remember that episode so well. It terrified me as a child because it was the music. It was so terrifying. And then a little girl like this who trapped you in a toy house. I have something to discuss with your father. My father has nothing to discuss with you, though. He just got out. He just got out. I haven't seen anyone leaving from the front door. That means their house must have another entrance. This is a perfect scene for an ambush. Are you hiding something, lady? Yuri grabs my hand. My arm. 
he, his fear shows that he's definitely lost his argument with her. Though, should I really interfere with the kids? They don't look like they're gonna hurt each other. Hello? You think this doesn't look like a person that would hurt another person? Even Yuri said that he doesn't think that the girl was evil. I don't understand kids. The girl charges towards us. Silver, help me! Whoa! So it was you all along. The girl grabs Yuri's collar before I try to do something. Give the doll back. I don't want to. Do you know how upset my father is? I needed it. You can't just enter people's houses and steal their belongings. I didn't steal it. I... Silver, what are you standing there for? I pick the girl and Yuri both by their arms and separate the kids. Yuri, did you really steal this girl's doll? I can't believe you. First, Pavlis gloves. Second, her doll? Maybe you have a problem, kid. I... I... Did you bring a mortal here? Is this woman a human? What? The girl charges towards Yuri again, this time more forcibly. I try to separate them once again. Hey, could you calm down? I can't believe you. You already took the doll and you brought a mortal here. Get out. Get out of it. No. I'll bring it to my dad. Get out. The girl grabs Yuri by the collar and pushes him onto the ground. Hey, you two. They tumble down towards the lake. There's something very wrong with these kids. Yuri! The kids fall into the water with a plop sound. At least they don't look like they're injured. I see the girl getting up swiftly. Even though she's in the water, she must be used to walking around here. Meanwhile, Yuri is just silly sitting in the water, with his back resting on a big piece of rock. Ugh, you piece of poop! I get down near them, but... Yuri? Where's Yuri's arm? Yuri? Silver! Are you okay, Yuri? I, uh, I... I crouch near Yuri, trying to make sense. What happened to your arm? My arm, it's there, Silver. See? I see an arm drifting away with the current. It's obviously Yuri's arm, since it also has a Pavlis glove on it. The girl takes the arm by the hand. Are you speaking about this? Sometimes things feel too supernatural to believe, even if I'm the one experiencing them. Yuri, why aren't you bleeding? He used the doll. I... I can explain, Silver. I'd appreciate it. He's a ghost. He doesn't really look like one. She throws me the arm. Yuri's arm. I catch it. He stole one of the bodies that my father made today. He tried so hard to craft one too, so he needs to return it. One of the bodies that the Vonnik made. Yuri is in a doll's body? His body was a doll all along? Silver, I... I pull Pavlis' glove out of his hand. I'm faced with a hand of a ball-jointed doll. I take a look at Yuri. He looks in desperate. I'm sorry, Silver. I really am. Why didn't you tell me? Because what if when you found out, found out that I wasn't a real boy, I was afraid that you would... You brought a mortal here and she doesn't even know that you're a ghost. Well, now I do. It's fine! This is no place for a mortal woman. Get lost. Are you a doll too, Anastasia? She's looking at something that's behind me. I turn around. Father! There's a man in the lake approaching us. He doesn't look wet enough for a person who just got out of the water, and his skin is... green? So this is the wild sea beast we were making a fuss about. Whoa! Kill him or finish him? Don't... don't... I didn't make his choice. That was timed? So it was either killing quickly or let him live? Oh boy. Excuse me, can you be a little quieter, Anna? But he came back and he did a lot of damage. Oh, so you've decided to come back. Is it to pay for the body you took, or at least to return it? I... The girl talks in a higher voice again. He also brought a mortal with him, father. 
So, the Vodnik is continuing his trade as a toy maker. And instead of keeping souls in pots, he stores them in dolls. <laughs> oh no! I am so worried that if we don't finish him, I don't know what that's gonna actually entail. I don't know if we're literally gonna kill him or if it's gonna be one of those we try to kill him and then it fails and then he's angry and we make everything worse. I don't know! <laughs> oh, it is a surprise to can encounter a human here. An unexpected customer. He doesn't look hostile at all. Keep your cool. He could be acting. The Vodnik killed a man today. He's on your list. He's a harmful beast. You have to eliminate him! Oh no! My mouse is not working! <laughs> I swiftly pull my gun and shoot him on the shoulder with a special bullet. It was... It was actively trying not to make me kill him. I hear the little girl gasp. You're being sloppy, Silver. That wasn't deadly. Aiming for the heart, I pull the trigger once again. He's dead. Why? Why did you kill him? Yuri, how many times do I have to tell you? I just didn't think you would actually... This is my job, Yuri. Do you think that I enjoy killing? Silver, stop waving your gun at me! I... what? Oh, sorry, Yuri. Yuri switches his gaze towards the Vodnik's dead body. I turn around. No, 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 no! Father, are you okay? Anastasia, listen to me. Your father killed a man today. Shut up! You're lying! I get that a lot. Look, he's the Vodnik. Shut up, shut up! You're lying! How do you know that? Why did you shoot him? He's not who you think he is. He's a bad guy. She gets up. I grew up without parents too. I think you need... I feel a breeze grasping my neck. Yeah. I can't breathe. I can't not now. Ugh. Silver! I'm not dead. Huh. I open my eyes. Yuri? I notice that my voice is hoarse. He is standing up in front of me, still with one arm. Silver, you're okay. I... guess? Silver, I can't understand what you're saying. Whatever. I shake my head. Silver. He's sitting right next to me, looking down in guilt. He has a vial in his hand. It's empty. You see, Silver, I... Is that my holy water? I used it on Anastasi. Whoa! You go, Yuri. I killed her. She was already dead, so... Your voice ruins the mood, Silver. I'm sorry. For what? I killed the girl. Yuri, stop it. It's okay. They were evil. I can't understand you. I cough a few times. I try to talk at a higher volume this time, even though my throat hurts when I do that. Ugh. So, the girl said you were a ghost. Yes. And? This is a doll that the Vodnik made. He makes these for the ghosts to possess, so that they can feel comfortable in them. Like a new body? Yes. Since I stole it this morning, I didn't have enough time to get accustomed to it. That's why I crawled my way up to the hotel. That's dedication. I'm sorry, Silver. He has the hiccups. Did you save me from the girl? I look at the lifeless body of Anna. She must have been possessing a doll, too. I stole one of your vials when you were unconscious, then I threw the water on you. You sure know a lot about these things. Congrats on your first exorcism, kid! I'm sorry, Silver. Don't be. I'm alive because of you. You saved me. I'm thankful. So very thankful. I'm a harmful beast now. You need to... Are, are you gonna kill me too? No. But ghosts were on your list. I also have killed someone. Someone who was like me. Silver, that's bad. That makes me a bad person. I, I made her disappear. Yuri, you're taking this too seriously. Calm down a bit. You did that to save me, isn't that right? He nods. So, take pride in it. She was about to kill me, and you saved a life. Silver, I don't want to be a bad ghost. You are a good ghost. 
the best ghost that I have met so far. He buries his head on my chest, hugging me with one arm. I decide I should definitely hug him back. We stay like that for a while. Is this how you should be handling grieving people? Silver. Yes? Do you think what you did is right? Maybe not objectively, but I think that they were bad people. I don't think what we did was wrong, at least. There's no use in feeling guilty, Yuri. I know that it'll drain you, and it is not worth it to feel like that over a murder. You think? Yes. I take a deep breath. Now, let's get your arm back. He nods as I get up. I take his arm from Anastasia's hand. She doesn't look like a doll at all. I crouch near Yuri and, and look at his joint line. Let's fix you now. Can you do that? We'll see. Can't say I trust your skills. This thing doesn't have any nerves, right? What do you mean? Can you feel the pain? No. I stick the ball joint onto his upper arm. Here. Fixed. He looks at his hand, moving his arm. Wow, didn't think you could do that. I just attached it. He must still be in shock. I should talk about something else. So. How did you die? Yeah, sure. Way to lighten up the mood, Laura. Well done. You're very blunt, huh? Crap. Wrong question. You think? Silver. Yes? I'll tell you about how I died, but I think we should bury the Vodnik first. Why? It made me feel a lot better when I was buried. Oh. Although, since he's supposed to be a water spirit, I don't know how death works for him. I look around the yard and in front of the house. There is some gardening equipment still. It looks like the Vodnik was a man who cared about his garden. I found two shovels. Just a picture of a shovel. Behind me. That's great, Silver. One for each of your hands. Won't you help me dig? No, you're the one who killed him, not me. I start digging. Well, then you dig the grave for Anna. So, Yuri, spill the beans. I used to be a king. The king of Hanover. When? In between 1797 and 1798. You're old. Older than you, for sure. How did you die, then? He looks like he doesn't want to talk about it. A friend betrayed me. I got assassinated by him. The whole kingdom knew that he was plotting against me. Such a heinous, treacherous snake. I see. How old were you when you died? I never knew the exact date of my birth, but people assumed that I was about 10 years old. Weren't you a royalty? I thought the births of royal people were well docu- well recorded. Whatever. Maybe forgot it after all of these years. Tell me about your list. Which list? Your hit list. I guess the name is self-explanatory. Who gave you that? The Wish Granter. Do you know him? Yuri? Did he want you to kill these people? Yes. The Wish Granter grants you one wish and wants something in return. The Vodnik doesn't pay his debt, and thus, he's on the list. Is blind be following orders your job too? Yes. I just run the errands. I don't decide what I do. I don't enjoy doing this either, Yuri. He grimaces. Okay then. You sound wimpy for a king. What were you gonna do if a war broke out? I wish to be a peaceful ruler. And you got killed because of it. Shut up. Silver? What is it, Yuri? They were bad people, right? Yes. And killing and exercise are killing and exercising the same thing. Do you think that I showed Anna the way of peace when I exercised her? I leave the shovel on the ground. I have no idea. Huh? I don't know. Of course, I'd like to believe that they will find peace, but I don't know anything. I'm not the one who died. I have less experience on this subject than you. I don't know either. I see. He looks down. I keep thinking I would like if I'd like to be exercised or not. And? I'm still thinking. Let me know once you decide. I might help you. If there's anything that I know, I definitely wouldn't want to get exercised by you, Silver. Looks like he's back to normal. Yuri, come take a look. I think this is enough. Should we bury the man? It's a lot more shallow than mine, but it should work. 
I pulled the Vonnik's body to the riverside and placed him in the grave that I just dug. He's a lot lighter than he looks. I wish him a peaceful afterlife, even though he was a bad guy. After afterlife. You aren't funny, Silver. Ending number two, bad end. Wow. Bad ending? How is that a bad ending? We killed Devonic, didn't we? Shoot. Now I'm gonna have to try to find the other endings. Oh, oh, we get an after thingy. Miss Carrot, do you hear me? Hey, is this phone working, Cooper? It is supposed to work, Miss Silver. Miss Carrot. Laura, it is so nice to hear from you, sweetheart. I'll report everything that happened, Miss Carrot. Though, I don't know why you'd want me to call you. I could have sent you a telegram about the matter. We should use the latest tech possible. It's important to adapt to the times, isn't it? If you say so. I was in Pilsen with Skoda. To take care of the Vodnik. Firstly, I should report that Skoda died. I know. Though, I haven't updated his status, status in the Bureau Registry yet. Wait a while. Should I continue speaking, Miss Karat? Yes, yeah, surely, dear. He died because the Vodnik drowned him. At least the murder scene looked like that. It isn't your job to solve murder cases. I'm only stating my observation. Since you have no experience on this, I have no reason to believe your observations. Next time, don't try inspecting a body. It may be dangerous for you. One way or another, Skoda is dead. You should assign another detective to here, Miss Karat. I don't think that there's a need to assign someone particularly to Czechoslovakia. Our representative in Germany will take care of it. Also, you already dealt with the Vodnik now, haven't you? Yes, I have. Just like I expected from you, my dearest Laura. I killed the Vodnik. Oh. I caused his daughter to perish as well. Was she a ghost? Indeed so, Miss Karat. How did you know? I was the one who sent you the file that said he killed his own daughter. Right. Are you alright, Laura? You don't sound very well. I have no serious injuries, Miss Carrot. No, I meant your voice sounds different. Have I asked something I shouldn't have? The phone doesn't work well. Maybe my voice isn't reaching you properly. Maybe. Let me ask once more, honey. Is everything okay? Miss Karat, it feels like I made a mistake. A mistake? I killed a man and his daughter. But honey, the man you speak of killed a worker of our bureau, did he not? I'm not so sure of that either. Also, he still hasn't paid his debt to the wish granter. Your job is to take care of the people on the list, honey. It's not like you killed them just for the fun of it. Not the man, but the girl. She didn't have to. Exercising isn't the same as killing, though, Dolly. You've helped them find peace in the afterlife, dear. It is nothing to get depressed about. Do you think that, Miss Karat? Of course. I mean, the Vodnik part isn't where you messed up. I got reports that said that you ran from the hotel. Yes. The death of Skoda is blamed on you, and let's not forget the fact that you're a wanted criminal in Czechoslovakia. That sounds like I ruined everything. I'll try to clean up the mess that you created, but I can't guarantee that I can erase all of the accusations. In any case, find a place of rest for a few days, and try not to attract any kind of attention. Yes, ma'am. Next time, wait until the police, police arrive. I could save you, even if you were detained, but it makes everything more complicated if you run away. It won't happen again. Also, try not to leave a trace. Use fake names at all costs. Skoda was the one who made reservations in our names. Why? We can't ask him, can we? Let's assume that he did this in order to make sure that you two wouldn't cause a problem in the hotel. There wouldn't be any problems if he didn't go die on me. So be it. Also, I have a few things to share with you, Miss Karat. Go on. Skoda said some things about you the night before he died. He said that he didn't trust you and claimed that he found evidence against you. Also, he stated that there was something suspicious about your documents. Hmm. Did you check his journal? 
Not thoroughly. I see. You said that you had connections with the wish granter, right, Miss Karat? Yes, I do. Is that the reason why you're currently the boss of this bureau? Honey, if I made a wish only about being the boss of a supernatural crisis bureau, it would be very stupid of me, wouldn't it? I also thought that you may have talked Devodnik into killing Skoda. Oh my! You're thinking too deviously of me, dear Laura. If I wanted to kill Skoda, I would break his door and face him instead of plotting those plans. But, I didn't know that Skoda planned against me. I presume he was fluffing in order to get some word out of you, because I came here with my hard work and years of effort. Or you're the one who's lying. Are you forgetting what I have done for you? Will you answer my question? I'm not forgetting it. When you're going to blame me, remember that no one else would help you pay the debt that you have. Don't ever forget that you are both related to the Wish Granter. We're in the same boat. You're almost as guilty as I am. I'm not working with him. I'm only paying my debt. And I'm the one who's helping you pay your debt. Nothing more. Nothing less. You didn't mention this to anyone else, yes? I didn't. Good. You won't. Don't forget that I'm the only one you can trust in this bureau. Yes, ma'am. I assume you're having doubts about the way that I conduct business because you're stressed and you just lost a co-worker. Killing someone isn't that easy either. You'll get used to it. I'm already used to it. Why did your voice shake then? You're still the same kind, Silver. Kind would be the last word to describe me. She laughed silently. So, Miss Karat, I'm done with my report, though the majority of the calls passed, to you, passed with you scolding me. You're pretty sharp-tongued, aren't you? Not as much as you. Oh, thank you, honey. Huh. Say, Laura. Yes? Which one do you like the most, crimson or raven black? What is a crimson? A darker red, honey. Crimson, then. Thought so. You remind me of red. Wish you good luck with the next mission, Laura. I appreciate the kind wishes, Miss Karat. I hang up the phone. Miss Silver, how was it? I am not calling this woman ever again. Would you want me to send the telegrams from now on? I sigh. That would be great, Cooper. So that was Misadventures of Laura Silver, Chapter 1. I did read that they wanted to put out multiple chapters for this game, uh, all following the uh, the same sort of main overhanging storyline, but with multiple cases. So the next chapter might be a uh, a a different case that she's doing for the uh, the wish granter. But this was a really enjoyable game. I enjoyed it a lot. It's a tiny bit shorter than I was expecting. It said on the Steam page that it would be. Uh, eight hours of content, but I assume with that they're also including all of the different endings. Because I only got one of the endings. I got ending number two, which is a bad ending. Um, but that was very enjoyable. I I enjoyed it. It was... Uh, I, I, I spent a lot of time playing it and uh, really wanting to know what was going to happen next, which is always a good thing with these visual novels, because some of them get a little too dragged out, and I didn't feel that way about this game. I didn't feel like it dragged out just for the sake of dragging out and creating more game time. So I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm really looking forward to the next chapter. Um, if I do go through the other endings, I probably won't do YouTube videos on those, so if you want to see the other endings, you should check out the game and consider buying it for yourself. It's not that expensive, it is on sale right now, I don't know if it will be on sale still when you watch this video, but there you go. The link is down in the description, and if you did enjoy this series, please consider liking the videos and subscribing to my YouTube channel. It helps me out a lot. Uh, so, yeah, that was Misadventures of Laura Silver. I had a good time with it. So, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed making these videos, and I will definitely be making more Let's Play videos in the future. This has been a ton of fun. So, again, thank you so much for watching. Bye.